Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. The unfortunate and dastardly killing of the rationalist and anti-superstition activist Dr. Narendra ja Dabolkar in Pune two days back has sparked off a debate which is little heard in this country in the popular media. The killing in broad daylight brings into sharp focus the increasing intolerance to rational and liberal thoughts and the increasing use of violence to counter another point of view. People like Dhabolkar who have been bravely fighting for rational thinking and against superstitions and blind beliefs have not had it easy as various forces are arraigned against them. The Maharashtra government's decision to promulgate an ordinance against such blind beliefs and superstition a day after Dhabolkar's killing shows the way the political class works on such matters. Meanwhile, it needs to be reminded that the Indian constitution has mandated as part of fundamental duties to develop scientific temper. However, as we witness increasing acts of intolerance based on religious beliefs and against liberal thoughts and values, one is forced to ask the question, is scientific temper losing ground to superstition, blind beliefs and irrational acts? To discuss this, I have with me today Gauhar Raza, a leading scientist, social activist and poet, among others. Ved Pratap Vaidik, a veteran journalist and scholar. Dr. Ajay Kumar, Lok Subha MP from the Jharkhand Vikas Morcha Prajatantrik. Welcome to all of you. Uh, Gaur, I would like to come to you first. You know, the constitution mandated, when, when the constitution is formed, it's part of the fundamental duties that, you know, we have to promote uh, scientific temper and, you know, humanism and all these things. Did that, you know, thought, which the constitution makers, uh, you know, gave it to us. Did it? Did we lose it on the way somewhere in these last 66 years? See, I've been saying since day before yesterday. Let me quote from uh, the debate on scientific policy resolution. In 1958, the first Prime Minister of India, who was a great intellectual, right. himself reads out this policy document before the parliamentarians. Now, Prime Minister reading out to the entire house a policy resolution in itself shows how seriously it was taken. Right. And now, look at the today's opposition and that day's opposition. They demand a discussion first, not to criticize, but to reinforce their and commitment towards this document. They are <laughs> disturbed that this document was not presented to the parliament earlier. And then they are saying in the document that I welcome the resolution because I think, and I quote, I <coughs> welcome the resolution because I think <coughs> that this is an expression of our resolve that we are registering a break from the tradition of irrational and unscientific thinking. Now, what is this irrational and unscientific thinking? What is the dream that they are perceiving for the future of the country? Science has led to the growth and diffusion of culture to an extent never possible before. It has not only radically altered man's material environment, but what is still deeper of deeper significance it has provided new tools of what? Thought. New tools of thought and has extended man's mental horizon. Now, this is a situation today where we are trying to narrow down this mental horizon instead of expanding. Right. Yes, we have lost the ground. We have lost the ground. The struggle have, has been extremely vigorous. But here comes the turning point that a person has to Give up his, have, give life. his life. Life. He is killed for his thought. He is killed for his action to broaden the horizon. He is killed because he is pushing a bill which the political parties are discussing and discussing for 18 years and they don't pass it. That is that, that's a separate uh, this thing about this uh, about this bill which was pending for 18 years. But I want to bring in Mr. Vaidik. Mr. Vaidik. Is the space shrinking for people who hold di a different point of view, which is not in tune with the general point of view? No, I don't think so. Not in India. How do you, how do you interpret this killing of uh, Mr. Dabulkar? Well, this is very dastardly. It should be condemned. 
it is it, this is not just some killing which has been done for profit or you know somebody has gone yeah. this is you know he has been killed for the thoughts and the beliefs he held yes you are right you are right you are right so wh- how do you interpret this why why is this happening now in this country increasing intolerance now somebody's uh, you know painting show is being uh, you know vandalized and all kinds of things and don't you see yesterday a, yesterday there yes, was an attack on 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 a performance uh, in the same city in the same city in and same in ahmedabad also recently yeah. there was another problem why do you think this intolerance is growing is there do you do you do you, do you uh, you know see any correlation between the the kind of politics which we see in this country and this intolerance well if you think of such incidents of intolerance they were always there even 100 years ago right. even 200 years ago even during the times of shankaracharya the we are suppo- but we are supposed Vishnu to be living in a Shaktas. modern society i beg your pardon we are supposed to be living in a modern society yeah you are right and society has become it has become modern people have become very tolerant and democratic but these are very exceptions you see india if you look look at india from a larger perspective you will find even among the south asian countries perhaps india is the most tolerant country but india is such a large country that such incidents took place and they they bring so much of you know kind of uh, consternation amongst intellectuals amongst those people who are awakened and who are democratic and who are open they it brings lot of shame to our country and i totally condemn such kinds of acts it's shameful really mr mr ajay kumar mr ajay kumar you have been a police officer apart from being an mp now you think that you know these kind of uh, incidents which happen are they are they based in the larger societal issues or do you think that you know these are issues how do the police or how do the law enforcement authorities tackle these kind of situations are the law enforcement authorities you know do they have do they have the wherewithal to tackle these kind of situations you know the fir- i think the first question is uh, if we keep saying that indians are uh, very tolerant i think you know uh, we are not uh, on the right track anymore we are not uh, we are not accepting the reality no the fact is that we are very very intolerant i mean you look at it in you come to delhi you come to you even see the incident in uh, uh, what happened in the train cutting the people were crossing the railway line then we caught the driver and beat him up to death and so i don't think you know this myth that indians are peace loving and everything else is one but the i think the issue is they were always opposition to different views or points but because of the governance collapse you see people now believe that they can get away with anything and that is what is the bad story for india whether it is the political class who we uh, you know like we the parliament is not running the government governance is at it's it's worse it, uh, they people are pretty sure that if they commit a murder they are not going to get caught right uh, people are sure that if they are corrupt they are never going to get caught the we are like bo- zimbabwe worse than zimbabwe because the files get go missing so so i think the basic issue in this country is you know this total uh, governance collapse and and you will continue to have outrageous incidents like that so if i don't like somebody i can hire somebody bump him off and i'm pretty confident i won't get caught so i think that is the problem it, and it across the world it is not that you can change people's morality you know you look at i'll give you a very good example like singapore singapore in 1945 korea in the 1945 was having the same here you know indexes like india but the question again is the governance the, and and in terms of you know it's not that the asians are more liable to corruption or not liable to corruption but the we have proved a point that the you can get away with anything in india and so people will continue to break the law and then we will continue to get exhaust you know go blue in the face saying what is happening to this country the bottom line is we've got one of the worst governance in the world and political class is responsible with the bureaucratic class and uh, we are actually genuinely Mr. spinning out of control ma- 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 dr ajay kumar i have you know let us let us look at this what uh, what happened in pune the other day you know here is a man who has been fighting for years for the for decades against certain beliefs against certain blind beliefs superstition he has been waging a battle against them for decades and you know increasingly he has been doing it from 1973 onwards and now in the last few years he has been getting many threatening calls you know he has been he has been threatened he has, there has been a lot of letters and all kinds of things written against him written to him what i'm asking is 
you know what what does this indicate is doesn't this indicate that there is a growing intolerance it doesn't it indicate that there is that, that there is yeah. no tolerance for a person who holds a different point of view i mean no, we are no. not talking of governments here we are talking of no, the larger the, problems in society no, no. the tolerance is coming down because you can get away with intolerance see what i'm trying to say is if you beat up somebody you're not going to get caught so the the general feeling you is are, that if you you are presenting mr dr ajay you are presenting a very very uh, pessimistic picture of a, of a force of which you are part of once upon a time no no i'm telling you the fact of like come on uh, girish ji the fact is that you do it what, what there is a basic study across the world which says that criminals will never commit a crime if they know they're going to get caught so so people in this country are convinced they will never get caught and and i'm i'm telling you with all seriousness you know i've seen it the police working from inside uh, and so mr dabolkar's incident is intolerance and look at the way police works you have leaders who've got z plus category for actually being crooks and you have There's guys like mr dabolkar who are who are fighting and who don't a simple murder is being compared with this kind of murder yeah, so uh, this murder, yeah yeah please 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 this murder no ordinary this killing and this ghastly killing is a result of a mindset absolutely it will not it cannot be tackled by by saying that we will we'll kill you or you hang you or by law we will we'll do something about it the thing is that there are forces in the country across the board within politicians within bureaucracy outside bureaucracy who support anti science anti scientific temper and, thinking and within the country in the police also in the police as well yeah. anywhere anywhere you walk through and you know that people are sitting there to protect this kind of consciousness and anybody raising question and more so a person who has been consistently fighting for scientific temper in the country and in the state he is liable to be killed not because he is a, an individual or i have enmity or you have enmity with him it is an attack on the constitution it is an attack on the fundamental values which we mr. have stood by for a very long mr. time mr mr vaidik what from from what we are reading and this is something which is not just confined to this incident which has happened in pune but you know in 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 this case what has happened is that some hindu organization some radical hindu organizations have been threatening him you know is this a problem why does hindu organizations become very active when against such kind of people you see because they are over confident i ask you a question who killed maharshi dayanand a hindu jagannath who killed mahatma gandhi a hindu why do they dare to kill such big leaders in a half it's not a it's not in a half really speaking no, but you agree, very well you agree with god that it is a yeah, mindset yeah yeah it's a very well planned it's a very premeditated action it is prepared for years together and they are not afraid of anybody they are not afraid of even being caught even if they are caught they think they are martyrs a, 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 a they think they are martyrs martyrs in a particular section of society is sympathetic towards them right so we should really blame these tendencies growing in our society right and this is very shameful that the half chapter incomplete chapter of our cultural renaissance of the 19th century has to be completed now and the political parties and leaders and many intellectuals do not dare to come forward as damholkar did you know damholkar abandoned his profession right his wife took care of his family right he dedicated himself to a cause and we have many spurious people who sit in ramlila maidan or in janta chowk or somewhere and they become leaders mahatma gandhi is over time they have no message to give to the people this man jambolkar i feel played a very historic role and he deserves if you confer any kind of honor on any citizen of india so, he deserves the highest honor that we confer on any citizen of india no you they are such dedicated people you 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 spoke of reforms reforms is something social reforms which which we talked yeah, about yeah. rational reforms is something which has taken a backseat yeah, yeah, yeah. in, in the in the in the last they are more fundamental decade. they are more fundamental than political reforms absolutely and also the we and uh, and ajay 
So the, see, this is this problem. The, do you agree that this is a larger problem than just a law and order problem, which can, which can be tackled at a, a, at the level of you know the, at the level of the police or at the level of the government? No, look uh, at the no. I I totally agree with the previous speakers. What I'm trying to say was that people continuously do this kind of events because they believe that the chance of getting away is high. But obviously, you know the the intolerance, the superstition, and whether it is the political class in terms of you know, uh, in terms of even where are the leaders who educate people you have most of the political people or bureaucrats or you know or uh, uh, so called powerful people going to these various babas exactly uh, meeting that is exactly them, you know, the this, point and you know attending and some of these ridiculous stuff i mean uh, uh, this baba is going you know touching their feet and this kind of crazy stuff which is happening so at the end of the day there is a total lack of civil leadership in society to even challenge this. You know, yes. there is difference between being spiritual and religious and being superstitious. Right. So, going to temple, fine. You know, going to the prayer place, fine. But this God men all over the country or this, you know, uh, I mean, absolute scamsters all over. And we continuously you know, look uh, on the other side. So, I agree with the, uh, my, the, my colleagues who are saying that. And uh, uh, definitely the, there is a... And look at it, there is no debate on this issue today also. I'm there glad you guys brought it up. Absolutely. But there is no debate. Even in the parliament, people don't think it's important enough. Right. Right. Okay. I think we need to go into a very short break. But before going to break, you know, one needs to understand and accept the fact that this blind faith or superstition is something which is religion neutral, which is caste neutral. Every religion, every caste seems to have suffered from these kind of problems, the, the blind beliefs and superstitions. We need to continue this discussion, but we'll, we'll go into a very short break now. Please keep watching and come back very soon. Welcome back. In the context of the dastardly killing of Dr. Narendra Dabolkar in Pune the other day, we are asking the question, is scientific temper giving losing ground to superstition and blind beliefs? Gaur, coming back to you, you know, this, there's, this, there, there's a lot of discussion going on in the last couple of days that the Maharashtra government had kept this bill pending for 18 years and, you know, just after this happened yesterday, they, they came out very quickly with an ordinance. But do you think that these kind of problems can be resolved with the, even, even if we presume that this bill had been passed, I say, about three years back, four years back or something like that, you think it would have, it would have saved Dabulkar's life? Uh, I think um, that the bills are necessary. Yes. They are a resolve to transform the society, transform the power structures. And it is because of the power structure that was being hit by him, therefore he was killed. It has nothing to do just with one single bill. But I would like to raise a much bigger question. As you said uh, while concluding the last uh, previous session, that it is across the board. Right. Now, Malala's killing, attempt to kill her, and this killing, as far as quality is concerned, the mindset is concerned, there is no difference. absolutely the same. Now, in India, we need to fight this. Malala's killing is being fought at international level. Right. And I am very happy that media has come forward, this time at least, to uh, call the names very clearly. Here is a man, what is he doing? He is saying that exploitation of women through black magic should be stopped. Yes. Magical rights in the name of superstitious powers should be stopped. Claim of possessing supernatural natural divine powers should be treated as crime. Claim of people that they are incarnation of God should be treated. Now, this is a whole list which comes from our tradition. Absolutely. It, it has nothing to do with modern science. Right. These are the things which are within our tradition. They have been discussed for a very long time. And as a nation, we have come to a situation where we say that scientific temper, spreading the spirit of human uh, humanism and the spirit of inquiry is, is the duty. In this kind of situation, somebody getting killed, we should hang our heads in shame. And I am very appalled that parliament has not discussed it. 
Today, it some 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 members, you mean, in all fairness, some members tried to raise it, and they just in Rajya Sabha at least a few members raised the issue. I mean, just mentioned the issue. Maybe but in there, there, there have been no discussion. It had there has been no discussion on that so in far. In 1958, the parliament would have been adjourned probably, yeah, or they would absolutely, have been. Mr. Uh, mm. Mr. Vaidik, do you think that you know when when you know when people fight for fight against you know this kind of blind faith, superstitions, and things like that? Why is it, why is it uh, you know, seen as anti-religion? Well, because uh, they are intertwined with our religious traditions. And it's not only in India. Almost in all the all, neighboring all the countries, right. Right, even in the European countries, right. which have 100% uh, literacy and right. education in their countries. Because superstition and blind faith it's based is on a religion. part of human nature. It, no, no, do, do, it, 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 is it, you said it's linked to religion. No, no, I say there are religions like Buddhists. Right. It is totally a rational religion based on logic, right. based on argument. Right. Similarly, Arya Samaj, right. a reformist movement, Raja Ram Mohan Ra, a reformist movement, they also call themselves religious, but they are very rational, logical, right. which is illogical, is left out. But you see, this part of religion, blind faith and uh, superstition, has to be fought not by law alone. Absolutely. It has to be fought by giving sanskars, dispositions to young children to think scientifically, argue their case and without arguments, they should not accept even the existence of God. That's what I say. Why people should accept the existence of God Without understanding. Without questioning. And Without here questioning. what happens, they accept one thing and on the, on, on the basis of same acceptance, they accept many other blind things which are totally non-logical, non which must be rejected. So I personally feel the spirit of, spirit of scientific inquiry. temper, inquiry, this should be inculcated. This, this, that's what the right Constitution from the said. The constitution spoke about inculcating, uh, but you know we have we have we seem to have regressed in this last 66 years instead of progressing on that score. Let me get uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar. Dr. Ajay Kumar, I have a yeah. question. You know, we all face this problem in our day-to-day -day life. We, we keep witnessing it, reading about it, and you know, hearing from other ex experiences. Are the police? How much is are the is the police force itself uh, free of such superstitions and blind mm -hmm. beliefs? No, I think the police is uh, as uh, superstitious as the rest of the society because, uh, uh, first of all, uh, you know, there is, uh, look, I'll, it's, it's, I, I keep coming to the institutional problems we have in the country. Right. 98% um, of the police budget is on revenue. That means it's on, only on salaries and some, uh, you know, fuel and all that. Right. So there is no training at all. So you join as a constable and you retire as a constable and you have never been trained. Secondly, I don't think, so even from a uh, rationality perspective or anything else, they, uh, there may be some difference in various state polices, but by and large, the police constables and policemen have no kind of training or exposure. In fact, uh, uh, so the police itself is not too well, uh, what you call, equipped to uh, propagate or handle or uh, resolve these issues. They are, they are as superstitious as... As you know, as rest of the society. Absolutely. But 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 Girish, one thing I wanted to say was, you know, when one of the things is the educated class, like when Mr. Dabolkar has been uh, uh, has been uh, fighting on this issue, how much of social media uh, uh, noise is there is is limited again. Absolutely. So in what fact, I'm trying to say is one of the reasons is in this country is like by my colleagues who have been speaking have been you know absolutely logical on this issue, but look at the buzz. Where is the buzz in the social media about these kind of issues? So the educated class also is, is, you know, also picks and chooses, and you know. So these are issues which are critically important for the country. Right. No. And, in, in fact, and we abdicated. Oh, sorry. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Well, yeah. Just, just finish, Ajay, Doctor. So, uh, so, 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 I, I feel. Uh, so it's it, the two things which are parallelly happening. You know, whether it's like what uh, uh, my colleagues have said on, you know, Malala Yusuf is, is absolutely true. I mean, it is, it's, is as heinous as what's happened to Malala and. Uh, and uh, in, in, but has it raised the, the, the consciousness in the country on this issue? I don't think so. Okay. And we are all responsible for it. And uh, and you're right. I mean, no, somebody must have tied there, in the Rajya Sabha. Ajay, Ajay, you were there in the parliament today. Was there any discussion among the MPs? Forget in the inside the house, outside the house itself, in the center, all, all other places. Was there any sense of outrage about what has happened? Did you see anything in among the MPs there? No. 
No, let me let me tell you something else, Girish. You know that's what this is, it, incident is is uh, was not even discussed. At, at least I at least I went around, so maybe the people who met me didn't discuss this issue at all. But even any issue, unfortunately, which is critically important, I don't think it is getting the kind of focus which the legislature, you know, the legislature, the parliament, or the legislative assemblies need to focus. And it's also a it's a sign of deteriorating leadership. Uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, uh, Absolutely. I mean, it's yes. it's really bad. I mean, yes, uh, yes. no national issues are discussed at all. I mean, issues <laughs> are discussed of. I mean, I'd be ashamed to say some of the stuff which we discuss in Central Hall, which is so irrelevant <laughs> to the country. I I don't think you should be uh, you should be letting the world know what is discussed there now, <laughs> uh, Mr. Vaidik. No, I, I want to I want to talk about the role of the media in all these things. You know, only now suddenly, the, how many people knew who is Dabolkar outside Maharashtra no. or outside Pune or outside Bombay? <coughs> only now we came to know about yeah. the work, kind of work which is done. The media also, don't you see the role of the media also to a great extent in this kind of uh, intolerance growing also because the media doesn't tackle this issue unless there is a, some sensational thing like this happening. You see, Mr. Nikam, media is meant by the same people who believe in superstitions, yes. blind faith. And blind faith and superstitions have been the essential part of almost all religions, miracles. Miracles. In, in every religion, oh, everybody, these miracles every, every, should be banned. Everybody wants a miracle because, to happen yeah, in their life. Yeah, miracles have no basis. They, they are not rational at all. They are just meant to persuade people without any reason, without any logic. They should be criticized openly and we should just not care for any religious head to be annoyed or any religious organization to take revenge from us. Do Let you them see, do, do whatever you, they no, want. But do you see do you see the political class responding to this kind of a situation? Well now? political class is the most self serving class. <laughs> you know, it talks only about those issues which bring which, them which, money and votes. That's all. Which is convenient to them. Yeah. Gaurav, we completely run out of time. Last words to you. you. You think that, you know, this, the, 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 mart we should call it the martyrdom of uh, Dr. Dabulkar. Yeah, sure, Absolutely. sure. We should sure, call sure. it the martyrdom no of Dr. Dabulkar. No should, doubt about it. Should, in, will, will this raise some amount of consciousness in this country? Yeah, yeah. Do you have any hopes on that? In independent India, he is the first martyr who has laid his life for, for this cause. Exactly for this cause. Absolutely. Others have also died. But he should be honored. Uh, as my friend said just now. But I would like to also raise another question. Quickly, quickly. Just, go just tell you, uh, inform you that uh, yesterday we had a press conference. It was very well attended. We passed a resolution and this resolution has been uh, vetted by a large number of scientists in the country. For the first time, scientists have come out and, and, and vetted this. And from the international community of communicators and rationalists, I have received... Uh, from experts, at least okay. from 10 countries. Well, I, I, think I, I, I did remarkable. the same. I, I, wrote, I, think a, I wrote a front page. Yeah. Of time, but I think yeah. on this optimistic note that the that the death of this man who, who fought... Okay, Ajay, very quickly if you want to react. I, I just want to say that as the country progresses, the leadership deficit in the, in the parliament, legislation, bureaucracy, you know, is being exposed as we become as a modern nation. Yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with you. On that note, we need to end. Hopefully, this this death of this man who fought almost all his life for, for, for rational thinking will not go waste. Thanks to all my guests, Mr. Dr. Ajay Kumar, uh, Gohar Raza, Mr. 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 Vaidek. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue on the big picture same time tomorrow.